Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to talk to you about a little something real quick. Um, have you ever noticed that life's just really hard sometimes? Um, it just is. I, uh, I I remember from the time I was a kid, I remember being on Boy Scouts and uh, every year we'd do this uh, ride to San Diego, uh, bicycle ride. We'd start in Newport Beach, you know, go down, stay at Pendleton and then uh, stay the night there, continue the next day. We'd do the Torrey Hills climb and all that, uh, ride the Amtrak back. but. One year, um, I really liked this bike ride. I thought it was a lot of fun and I got, you know, I wanted to be ready for it. And so I got a 10 speed and I was riding every day after school and trying to get myself in shape and get ready for the ride. Um, the day of the trip, I was all excited. I was dressed in my biker shorts. I had my 10 speed, I had my helmet, my gloves, my water bottle. I was ready to go. And this guy that, uh, there was an older guy that would lead us on the trip. Um, seemed like an older guy to me then when I was 13, 14, but uh, he was probably just in his 20s or something. He was a cyclist. And so he would lead on the trip and he'd always get a big lead ahead of us. And so that first day, the first leg of the trip, I did my best to keep up with him. You know, I um, I was pumping. I was pushing real hard, um, doing pretty good. He left the whole pack in the dust. I left the whole pack in the dust. I wasn't keeping up with him, but I was doing pretty good. And so we got to the first stop and uh, he said, you know, you did pretty good. You almost kept up with me there, you know, and I was like kind of happy, kind of proud of myself. And then the whole pack of the rest of the Boy Scout guys uh, pull up and they just started giving me a hard time. And it was like that the rest of the trip. It was like, oh, great biker, you know, and just making fun of me. I just kind of laughed it off and, you know, like guys do and uh, got through it. But uh, as the trip wore on the next couple of days, it really started to weigh on me, it started to get started to wear on me, you know, and I got, I got, uh, on the way home on the Amtrak I actually ended up breaking down and I was just a kid, you know, but, uh, but you know, it was tough. I remember later on, there was a job that I really wanted. A couple of my friends worked there and, um, I just went every day, you know, and talked to the people down there. Hey, just checking on the progress of my application. And, uh, finally the, the manager of the place just goes, look, man, I'm just going to hire you. You're just, you're just persistent. And I like that. So, I uh, just got to go do a little drug test and a, and a medical exam and stuff. So I was I was stoked, man. And it was like half the, it was probably 50% more than any other job was paying at the time. And so I went and did the physical, um, passed everything, but there was something they found in my x-rays and they said, yeah, we just can't hire you, man. I remember the feeling of disappointment. Got my hopes all up, so excited to have this job and I just got let down, you know. Um, in, in life, there's been lots of ups and downs. Um, really high highs and then really low lows walking through a marriage that fell apart um you know just seeing uh, losing people i love seeing friends of mine lose people they love and um going through career change that i that i wasn't expecting or desiring um th there's just hard things life is hard you know and um sometimes i think when we think about god we think about uh the bible we think about jesus we think you know this is just this is some god that doesn't understand us he doesn't get us and um, he just, you know, expects us to live all perfect and he doesn't even get what it's like to be one of us, you know, but um, I want to tell you why that's not true. Um, because I've, I've been thinking about this a lot the last couple of months and, um, you know, it, it, there, there's, we all know the verse in the Bible that says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that all who believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and in a sense, it's true. God loves us. And, and, and it's, it's true that Jesus has always loved us. I mean, being eternal God means that he has always understood us. But they think there's a distinction in, in, in the incarnation. And, and that's this, when Jesus became one of us, okay, when he became one of us, um, the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? And so when Jesus became flesh and blood, he experienced life as one of us. I mean, he lived for 30 plus years with us, with humanity. Uh, and, and he not only understands us from like an external perspective looking in, but Jesus understands us from our perspective, you know? And the amazing thing is that after living with us as one of us, what his incarnation produced in him was compassion for us. Um, I mean, even in our sin and our brokenness and our failure and all the dumb things that people do, um, he's just compassionate toward us. And, and it's because he understands what we feel. He understands what we experience, um, the weakness of our minds and our emotions, um, how hunger, you know, affects our focus, um, 
what it feels like to be tired and need to sleep, how hopelessness or depression can sap our motivation and our desire, um, how, how, how life just feels like it's just passing us by. And so we, we strive and we grasp for some form of significance in, in the brevity of our little short lives, you know. Um, he understands how our bodies just crave more and more and more and more and more and yet are never satisfied. But, but more than all of that, Jesus understands how hopeless and helpless we are in our own lostness, in our own complete inability to help ourselves out of our own situation. And that's why even after he was betrayed by a friend, um, blindfolded and punched in the face, when his beard was ripped out by the roots, being falsely accused and wrongly convicted, being beaten and scourged, made to carry his own cross on his bloody back while being mocked and shouted at and spit on after being crucified and laughed at, after being ridiculed, hanging on his cross, horribly injured, hanging there, dying in excruciating pain, he looked down from his cross at the men who were throwing dice, he says, casting lots for his garments. And through all of his agony, through all of his pain, all he felt was compassion for those men who had nailed him there. And it was there on his cross that he prayed to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, Jesus is our advocate because he understands us. He's our savior because he took our place. He, he's our Lord because God's given him in the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's our healer because it's by his stripes that we're healed. He's our high priest because he sprinkled his own blood on the holy altar in the heavenly places. He's the lamb of God because he was slain for the sins of the world. But Jesus is our advocate because of his incarnation, because he literally put on human flesh and he lived and he dwelt among us. He understands who we are and he loves us anyways. Anyways, that's the message I wanted to give you. God understands, Jesus understands. And despite all your frailty, all your struggle, all your frustration, all your hopelessness, all your anger, in being falsely accused, in being misunderstood, there is one who always understands exactly who you are and, and wants you just the way you are because he loves you just the way you are. Thank you.